guys, Jonathan here at Shadow Foam. I am at our brand new workshop location, Top Secret, and we are building this epic beastie. We've never done a Dewalt power tool wall, and this one is a modular power tool wall. It's pretty sick, I'm buzzing with it, and it was all done with simple tools and techniques that anybody could do at home. Let's show you how we did it. So these are all of the power tools that we've got. It's a pretty good range of Dewalt stuff. And you might recognize a fair amount of it because it was all organized in the ultimate tough system stack. And you can go and watch that video here. So if you're site based, you're using Dewalt tools and you're out and about, you might be familiar with a tough system. You might want to get all these organized in a mobile solution. But if you're in a workshop and you want everything dialed in and really visible, well, getting all of these in a power tool panel on the wall, it turns your power tools into a piece of art, which I love. Let me talk you through what we've got here then. So we've got an impact drill and a combi drill. This is a pretty good model. What model is this I've got here? It's a DCD 795. It's got the metal chalk. I'm really happy with all of my Dewalt tools to be fair and that is no exception. Dewalt torch, you never really use it but it's good to have one when you're committed to the battery system, right? It's always good to have the extra small bits and bobs. The recip saw is a pretty new addition. I've not even used that yet but it's something that I know I want in this power tool panel. We've got the multi saw, we've got a planer. This is a new addition as well, an orbital sander. We've got the multi tool, grinder, jigsaw. This is a bit of a beast. This is the Dewalt SDS drill model is the DCH172. It's surprisingly small and we've also got the heat gun and I do love cordless heat guns. I think that is a bit of a, a bit of magic. Magic. And then this is the standard circular saw from Dewalt but this did give up the ghost on me not too long ago which I never mind happening because it gave me the opportunity to upgrade it to a brushless model. They're both brushless, that's brushless, this is brushless, that is. Obviously nothing in the heat gun, that's brushless. Actually it looks like everything is a jigsaw. Oh, you're letting the side down. So the jigsaw is the only thing that's not brushless. That's brushless, that is, and that is, and that is. Oh, we might have to do something about this, Matty. No, we don't, John. But it's not seeing much use, that, so we're not changing it. We're sticking with it. So that's all the power tools. All I'm going to need now is the materials to build this modular power tool frame. So for that, let's head to B&Q. Right, so I've got everything I need from B&Q and basically the, the foundation, the first piece of the puzzle is these 12 mil MDF panels because they are the same size we're gonna make the frames. I don't have to do any cutting. This is a great kind of beginner project really because, well actually I'd say this is novice because the first level was the power tool wall panels behind me. These are IKEA picture frames. They're already made and all we had to do with those is pin a backer on them and then we put foam in them, dead simple, and they're all on this French cleat wall. So if you've not seen this build, follow that link. You can go and watch how we made this. We had a lot of people though who wanted Wanted us to build them from scratch and I don't think we're quite at dovetailing and really complex joinery yet maybe we'll get there one day let me know in the comments how you would build these frames but for me I'm going to try and keep it as simple as I can and keep it nice and quick but also solid so these are 1220 millimeters by 610 and basically we're going to take this 18 mil clear square edged EG piece that's like edge glued panels these are pine 18 mil and we're basically going to cut these and make a lovely little frame around this so out of one two meter length I'll be able to get a side and a bottom. So I need two of these, which I've already got, and I can cut four lengths out of these, two sides, two tops and bottoms, and then I'll just literally drill and screw either end, and then I'll screw the back on, and that way I can unscrew it in the future and take the foam out. So let's get that sorted. Pine cone. <laughs> Pine cone. So there we have it, that's all done. It was a really simple build, and in my opinion, there's a beauty in simplicity. I'd love to get the time one day to go and do all little dovetail joints, maybe some tenon joints or something, I don't know. You can let me know in the comments. But I've just gone for what you might call butt joints. <laughs>
The thing is, I wasn't overly concerned because I knew I was putting a 12mm MDF backer on it, which is going to make the whole thing as solid as it's ever going to need to be. Once I put the foam in there too, and then put like a, a border on the front as well, this thing is far more over-engineered than it needs to be. The beauty of it is the timber that I've used, this, this 18mm kind of pine, not only looks really good, it's just really solid. So that has come out really nicely. And the astute among you might have been wondering why I was building the thing with skill tools and not the Dewalt tools. But sadly, the Dewalt tools aren't organized yet. So I can't use those. And uh, <laughs> these ones are all beautifully organized behind me. So um, for those of you who've already shot down to the comments and told me that I should be using the Dewalt tools, well, once they're organized in a power tool wall, and they're all dialed in. I'll be doing a build with those as well. So don't worry. And I always say it, but we're getting close to 100,000 subscribers now. This is so exciting. And a lot of you still aren't subscribed. So head down there because we've got loads of epic builds coming, including the rest of this huge project, which we're only just starting. So there's massive things to come. Click the subscribe button and click that bell icon because then when our videos release, you get a notification, you're not going to miss it. And it really helps us grow the channel. So back to the build. Next thing is fill this big old box with foam. And because I'm going to be putting like a mitered frame on the front of it. I do want the foam to come all the way to the surface. And if you're wondering why I've gone for a, such a deep box, it's because something like the circular saw is a really deep item. I want to cut it right in there. I want it to look flush. I think that's going to be a really cool effect to have all of these power tools literally flush to the surface. So never done a power tool wall like that before. Usually our panels are about 100 mil deep maximum. And you'll see like with this skill circular saw behind me, it kind of pokes out the wall by about 100 mil. So yeah, we need to fill it with foam. We've got 20 centimeters, 200 millimeters of depth. So I'll have to go for like four 50 mil sheets. I could possibly get away with two 70s and a 50, but I will have to go with one of our custom sizes. So it's 119 centimeters by 57. So I can go on the website, shadowfoam.com, custom size page, plug in those numbers and I can get sheets perfectly sized to fit this. So I'm gonna need three or four sheets. We'll stack it to the top and then we can start on the layout. So let's go and get some foam. Right, so there's all the foam, 1.2 meters by 600. So these come off our custom size page. And with those in hand, let's do a layout. So there we go, that is the layout completed. Took a bit of work, a bit of finessing, trying to get everything to fit on this one board. Because it is tricky, you've kind of got to find the natural jigsaw in of pieces. So this is a great example up here. You've got the line of the recip saw, which kind of naturally matches up with the line of the jigsaw. And then by finding that and putting those two together, you can save a lot more space. And then in this little gap here, we've got like the heat gun, which flows into it. And then we've created a corner, which then the SDS drill slots into. Then you're looking for the four block Tetris to just kind of like slot in there, which is quite cool. And then we've got move that over a touch. I'm trying to leave, you know, a minimum 10 mil between items, but I'm looking for a balance really. This is a bit tricky. The circular saw is going to cut really deep into the foam, but that's why we've gone for such a deep panel. Obviously it's a tricky shape. So is this kind of multi-saw here, but the two kind of just about nest together. So we're only going to really know for sure when I start cutting items in, but I think we're pretty damn close with that. So with all that done, now it's time to cut the foam. And for cutting the foam, I'm just going to use one of our basic cutting kits. These come free with orders over 60 quid and it's everything I'm going to need to get the job done. Main thing being anti-cut gloves. In the early days of shadow foam when we didn't have anti-cut gloves I used to nip myself with scalpels all the time but these are a game changer. I've not cut myself in flipping years with these on so make sure you wear the anti-cut gloves. Then all you need is your scalpel with a sharp blade on it and then we're just going to cut around each and every item and for this top layer, this top layer is 70 mil, most of these items I'm going to be cutting all the way through the foam. A couple of the small ones like the torch for example I'll just cut all the way around it, peel back about 40 mils worth of layers and then that'll slot in. But you've seen it all before, high speed time lapse. <laughs>
there we go that is the first sheet all cut i've still got a little bit of cutting to do because this is going to be stacked up on another 70 on another 50 to go in the box so i will have to cut uh, the circular saw in a bit deeper i'll have to cut the sander in a bit deeper maybe the grinder so there's a bit more cutting to do when it comes to this sheet not all of the items are cut all the way through a few of them are so you can see this jigsaw here it's cut all the way through and then obviously when we stick that to the other sheet there we'll have a nice flat finish something like the uh, sander this is quite interesting because with this one you've got like this protrusion that's right down low so you don't want to cut around that and have like a big gap in the top of the foam so for something like this what i do i kind of line it up where i think it's going to be and then cut a hole so that that can then slot into the foam and then once the sander's sat flush i can then cut around the profile and then what i've done is i've got like a return cut here so then that can kind of just go around the corner and tuck underneath and it just gives you a better finish with the circular saw that's a bit of a tricky item too because you'll notice there's like a big protrusion there that comes out further than anything else so for that i kind of place it on the foam and i just try and get the scalpel in on an angle to just mark where that is as you can see here all the evidence of that cut is gone it can sit in there a little bit flusher to the surface and then i can get a more accurate cut along this straight edge here i literally just cut it straight and then eventually once i've cut the back layers it's sitting a bit deeper this kind of like blade guard will be sat on the foam and i can cut around that especially something like that you have to cut them in in multiple stages so that is a bit more of a complicated shape but then obviously simple items like this we've got a multi-tool here it's really simple it's all flat i can lay it on the surface cut around it and then just peel out the foam so we've got a variety of techniques that have gone on here but they've all resulted in what i think is a really nicely balanced layout nothing is closer than 10 mil i've managed to fit everything in so next thing we'll get all of these sheets stacked up and get them in the box and then the tools that you can see are a bit proud i'm going to cut them all a bit deeper into the foam so they're all nice and flush that should give us a really good look i'm, I'm looking forward to seeing this to be fair so let's get cracking <laughs> So there we go. All of the items that were kind of protruding a bit far, we cut them down deeper. So the main ones really were the circular saw, the planer. I can't go too deep with the planer because the handle kind of stands out a lot further than the rest of it. So if I got the handle flush, the planer would be like lost inside a massive cavity, which would look a bit strange. So there is a bit of a balance to be had, really. Most of these items are all flush to the surface. It should look really good when it's up on the wall. So I'm really happy with that. All we've got to do now is add some trim. So what I've gone for is this 25 mil kind of profile from being q because essentially the wall's 18 mil with this 25 mil here it'll just overhang enough that the foam is never going to go anywhere and if i do want to change the foam sheets out the back panel is screwed on so i can unscrew the back panel push the foam through replace it and go again so it's a nice reusable system but i didn't want to have a really wide bead i originally bought 38 mil i think it was kind of profile and the problem is i lost a bit too much of the real estate of the foam all the way around i'm losing you know a couple of percent easy and it made the layout really tricky so i actually went back and bought this thinner profile 25 mil and that should be just the ticket so you're gonna hate this but i've only got a makita pin nailer so i'm gonna have to use this so we've had a real mix of power tools used in this build let me know your allegiance is it dewalt is it milwaukee is it skill is it makita my dad's a builder and he was a makita man so i kind of started on makita and i've got a lot of makita tools as a nature of this channel it's nice to look at all different power tools and we've kind of done builds with all of the major power tool brands now I do really like the Dewalt stuff. I've not tried the FlexVolt batteries, but I think that's one of the next things I want to pick up. This 25 mil trim, I've just lined it up flush with this end here, and then I'm just going to pin it all the way down, and then I'll use just a little fine woodworking saw to just trim off the end. Don't even have to cut anything to length. Right, that's the first one done. Let's do the others. that's all the trim on looking good i also went over it with a sander and kind of took any nibs off and just basically flushed up all of these joints here so they're all nice and smooth which is nice any sort of overhang not that there was i mean those these little japanese flush cut saws get a really close finish anyway but with a sander it's now perfect and there's no chance of any splinters so i'm really happy with that because there's nothing that you couldn't do here with basic tools i mean obviously i'm using the power tools but in reality if you don't have a pin nailer you could have just used some little penny nails we are going to be building more of these and i think on the next one i might try and use pocket holes actually one thing i have forgotten though is finger pulls some of these tools you can get out nice and easily like the planer because you can just grab the handle 
But there's a couple of these that you'll never get out without finger pulls. This drill, for example, really tricky without some finger pulls. So for that, I'm just gonna use one of our stencils. So we have stencil sets available, three different sizes. I'm just gonna use the large circle one. So this is 36 mil up to 50 mil. And basically I'm gonna probably go for about 44, 46 mil semicircle on the trigger of all of these items that are gonna be a tricky one to get out. Once I've done that, that will be a finished build. So let's get that sorted. Right, so that's all of the finger pills done, and it does weigh a ton this, but just check it out. We, oh, wow, that is heavy. <laughs> Immediately regret this decision. That is heavy. That is the build complete. And that is only a small section of what's coming. We have got a huge project planned and this is the first piece of the puzzle. It's gonna be epic. I can't wait to show you, to be honest. I wanna skip ahead and have the whole build done, but this is the first piece. It starts here. So let's take it over to the new workshop. We can give you a bit of a sneak peek on what we've got planned. Can't tell you too much though, can't give the game away, but you're gonna to wanna to make sure you subscribe and click the bell icon because you are not gonna to wanna to miss it. You're gonna to wanna to be there as soon as we launch the next few videos in this series because it is epic but let's go and get it on the wall. So there we go, it's in spot, it weighs a flipping ton, but we brought it over to our new workshop area. As you can see, the walls are bare. It's crying out for something else, and that is the teaser. <laughs> you, hopefully you can guess what's coming. Some are big, some are amazing. I can't wait to build the rest of these panels. And let me know, if you're not a Dewalt guy, what power tool brand do you use? I love talking all things tools down in the comments. I read all the comments and I do reply to all of them as well. So let me know what's your brand of choice and I'm off to build the next frame. So I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching. If you like that video, why not check out some of our others? We've got new videos coming out every week. And Colin Furs, what's the quickest way for people to see these videos? Subscribe.